Joining me now is the chair of the House Republican Conference, Liz Cheney of Wyoming. Congresswoman Cheney, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thank you, Todd. Great to be back uh, with you. I want to start with uh, what happened in the House this week, um, because it was a bit of a surprise. You, were, you voted against this broad resolution, and while your criticism of the resolution I totally understand, but you were in the minority in your party. Um, did your fellow House Republicans make a mistake by voting with the Democrats on this resolution? No, look, I think that there were two ways we could have gone. Some of the people in our conference clearly looked at it and said there's nothing objectionable in the resolution. My statement made clear that that, that was my view as well. Uh, but I decided to vote against it because I think it was really clearly an effort to actually protect Ilan Omar, uh, to cover up her bigotry and anti-Semitism by refusing to name her. Uh, the Democrats have yet to take any action to remove her from her committee. Uh, and they've got a real problem. I mean, the extent to which they are now about fighting by anti-Semitism, enabling anti-Semitism in their party uh, is something we watch them struggle with, uh, but something that's very dangerous for the country. So uh, I'm hopeful that they will be able to, to stand up and do the right thing on this. I am curious. There was a bit of criticism. Politico noted their Republican sources were quite peeved at Cheney, referring to you to say the least. The thinking among most top Republicans is this. When you're part of a leadership team, you stick together, period. Criticism being, since you're a member of leadership, uh, that you should have spoken with one voice. Well, look, I think that, you know, you know how the Hill works are always uh, those anonymous sources who are out there sniping. But I think the important thing to, for us to be focused on and to remember, mm -hmm. the Democrats have been in charge now for about two and a half months in the House. And in that time, they've become the party of anti-Semitism, the party of infanticide, the party of socialism. They've passed legislation that's violated the First Amendment, the Second Amendment. It's really time for the Democrats, the leadership in that party, to stop it, to stand up and to act worthy, frankly, of the trust the American people have placed in them. It's wanna, crucial for the nation. I want to unpack a couple of things you just said there. First on the issue of, you said you, you think Congressman Omar should lose her committee assignments. You led the fight to get Congressman Steve King, Republican, um, to have him stripped of his committee assignments. Let me ask you this. Why is this, why should congressional leaders do that? If the voters are going to send these folks, the voters in western Iowa know Steve King, for better or for worse. And the voters in Minnesota knew her comments were very, very much well popped. Uh, uh, well uh, publicized. If they send them there, should congressional leaders really be telling, be stripping, not allowing them on committees? Yeah, you know, I think that the point is voters send them there. Nobody is saying we're going to expel them. We respect the, the decision the voters have made. But there are certain things that shouldn't be part of our public discourse. White supremacy is one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, and anti-Semitism, the, the history in terms of what happens when you don't stand up to the evil, the history in terms of how quickly uh, words turn into something much more horrible when it comes to anti-Semitism. As a nation, we must at all times stand up to it. And the kind of anti-Semitism that you're seeing now from Ilan Omar mm -hmm. and that has been supported by her colleagues is a kind of anti-Semitism that really has the ability to creep in and become normalized in our discourse. And we have an absolute obligation not to let that happen. Well, there's actually an anti-Semitism that has creeped into our discourse. Look at George Soros, okay? The Republican and conservative attacks on George Soros over the years. In fact, Kevin McCarthy had a poll one tweet that implied that he was essentially trying to buy this or buy that. That's gotten mainstreamed in ways for years to the point where George Soros had, a, had some guy who was trying to pipe bomb him. Um, this whataboutism. Can no, I just no, tell no, you, no. Congresswoman, yeah, this no, whataboutism what where everybody is, yeah, that everybody tries no, to point Chuck, to the I'm other gonna, side. I, Chuck, Chuck. And, it, and it's there, getting The whataboutism uh, absolutely should not go on. And everyone, including Leader McCarthy, has stood up absolutely firmly to condemn anti-Semitism. The, the, the thing that people need to be focused on here, though, is that the Democrats in the House of Representatives and even some of the, the Democrats themselves are uh, completely uh, frustrated with the fact that the leadership is, they, they are protecting her. You know, this isn't just just being silent. They are protecting her by failing to put a resolution on the floor that names her and that strips her of her committee assignment. Instead, they put a resolution on the floor, which she then went out and, ye and said, this is a tremendous victory for me. Now, if, if we are not going to be in a position where you say the kind of language that she has said again and again and again is absolutely unacceptable and has no place in our discourse, then, then those people who won't condemn it are enabling it. There was some concern by singling her out. You only make her a target, and they pointed to that West Virginia Republican Party flyer. Chuck, I, I'm sorry, but this but is getting. But my point is, we are getting. You a, can describe it that way, it, Chuck. You can describe it that way. In a very dangerous way, though. You if can we describe do it that way, but you are wrong. When you have a situation in this country and around the world where we have seen the global rise in anti-Semitic attacks, when we have had the kinds of attacks that you had on the synagogue here in the United States recently, that is a moment when you absolutely a motive on the right. That guy was motivated by right-wing fringe ideology. Anti-Semitic. Right. Anti-Semitic, no matter where it comes from, is wrong.
And when you're in a situation where you are an elected official, where we are in a situation where we have the history that we have, what happens when you don't stand up and say, this is evil, and call it what it is? We all have an obligation to do that. And I think it is absolutely shameful that Nancy Pelosi and Leader Hoyer and the Democratic leaders yeah. will not put her name in a resolution on the floor and condemn her remarks and remove her from the House Foreign Affairs Committee. You feel comfortable that President Trump's done enough? to tamp down this right-wing fringe anti-Semitism that's Look, been rising up? I don't believe this is right or left. I think that this is an issue on which all of us should come together, particularly elected officials, the president, the vice president, members of the Senate and the House, no matter what your party is, stand up and say, in today's world, when anti-Semitism is on the rise, when we have the history that we have, when we know what happens when people remain silent, every single one of us must at all times stand against it. I, there's a couple of foreign policy headlines I wanted to get at you. First, this was with the president on Friday about North Korea. I have a feeling that our relationship with North Korea, Kim Jong-un and myself, Chairman Kim, I think it's a very good one. I think it remains good. I would be uh, surprised in a negative way if he did anything that was uh, not per our understanding. This is what we've learned just this week. He's accelerating the rocket program again. He's enriched more uranium between the two summits. And more importantly, um, they were reconstituting the programs while the summit, second summit, was taking place. Yeah. The president yeah. there, uh, you can't take him at his word on this, can you? We have, we have watched Kim Jong-un and his father and his grandfather operate the same way now for decades. And I would say that Republican and Democratic administrations got taken by him. I hope this president won't. I think that, you know, their efforts are absolutely clear. I mean, and, we are, hasn't he already think, gotten more out of this president by simply getting respect no, on the world stage? You know what? Stage? I think the fact that the president walked away from the summit in Vietnam yeah. is a very positive thing. I think that that was the right thing to do. We don't want a bad deal that makes us less safe. And before I let you go, the president's going to roll out a budget, and there's going to be something in there um, that's going to be quite alarming to some allies. The president's going to advocate perhaps wherever we have troops overseas, think Japan, uh, South Korea, Germany, he's going to ask for uh, cost plus 50, essentially tax countries over and above where we have bases. What does that do to the diplomacy of this, for this country? I think it would be absolutely devastating. Uh, we benefit tremendously. If you look at the last 70 years, we have been able to benefit both from the perspective of freedom, prosperity, security, safety, because of our bases and our cooperation with our allies. The notion that we are somehow now going to charge them cost plus 50 uh, is, is really, it's wrongheaded, and it would be devastating to the security of the nation do and to imagine, our allies. Do you think your Republican Party will support this? I won't. But you're, the party might. Well, I, I, I think it's going to be very important for us to make sure that people understand the danger okay. that that will do to our relationships and to our fundamental security. Our security, we've been able to protect it because of our alliances and because we've been able to work with countries. And we should not look at this as though somehow we need to charge them uh, or rent or for the, the privilege of having our forces there because that does us a huge, a huge benefit as well. Congresswoman Liz Cheney, Republican from Wyoming. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Chuck. Good to be with Good you. Good to see you here. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe. By clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.